Welcome back to Fog Wrestling, guys. We're here with another retro pay-per-view review. Of course, we are doing a Ruthless Aggression series. We'll be reviewing right from 2002. The brand split right up to 2008. But that doesn't mean you can't review other stuff in other time periods. We've reviewed other shows. Survivor Series 98. Um, we've also did what's two sold out 2000. Plenty of other shows. 2010 Royal Rumble, for example. A few Manias as well. But here we are with St. Valentine's Day Massacre. We are about a week uh, after Valentine's Day in real life. But this took place pretty much 23 years ago. And of course, it took place in 1999. It is the only St. Valentine's Day Massacre. I mean, just, let's just look at this name for a second, right? St. Valentine's Day Massacre. What an absolute quality name. I mean... The front covers McMahon with that fucking demon look, holding the, the roses, looking into the cameraman. It had a 450,000 buy rate. Basically, it's got two main matches. We've got The Rock against Mankind for the WWF title in a last man standing match. Um, and meanwhile, in our main event, we have Stone Cold Steve Austin taking on Vince McMahon. And basically, this would have determined the outcome of Austin would go on the headline Mania the following month. Because no corporation member could get involved but we do have this show guys and we did have eight matches on the card also weirdly like we had billy gunn taking on tiger ali singh which ends in a no contest and this is just your dark matches right but a bunch of weird ass matches like you know weird ass matches but we kick off the show with gold dust versus blue dust, and let's be real, right? All these people that think like, like no, I'm not. Gonna, I wasn't gonna bury the attitude, all right? But the roster in like '98 and early, like the mid '99, like '97, it's just nowhere near late '99, 2000, 2001, 2002. It's just it's night and day, you know. Like it really is. It really fucking is. Um, but we have Gold Dust versus Blue Dust. Blue Mini's pretty agile for his size. Doesn't exactly um, <laughs> mean an awful lot, though, <laughs> if we're being real about it. But Gold Dust picks up the win. And then we have a match which only goes 10 minutes. We have Bob Holly, king on commentary, kept on ho hammering the fact here that he's called Spark Plug. He's like, yeah, maybe he's going to lose the Spark Plug moniker. And obviously, soon after this, he would come. Hardcore Holly, but yeah, what I like about this, he's taking on Al Snow and it says in brackets, with head. What does everybody want? Al Snow, great guy, but they're battling outside in the snow. Just iconic, man. Like, compare this match, right? This is, this is like, literally a match between two Job Squad members, literally. Like, we're, like I'm not even joking when I say Job Squad members for the, the new generation. Um, but I, battle away in the snow for the Hardcore title, look what you get now. Up, roll ups. For the 24-7 title. God help people who didn't fuck or have never watched old wrestling. Because it used to be fucking great. Um, but this was a really decent hardcore match, right? Next up, I have no idea what is going on here. We have a big boss man taking on Midian in a singles match. It goes 6 minutes 19. And it had to be the longest 6 minutes and 19 seconds of my entire Fucking existed. I don't know what in the name of Christ was going on here. Honestly. The crowd got absolutely... If you want to talk about a match that just, like, kills the crowd... Well, it didn't kill the crowd. Like, the crowd was still active, but... Jesus, man. This could kill any crowd. And it near enough dead. Big boss, man. Defeats Mitt. Does it matter? Does it fuck it? Like, why is this even on the card? I don't even know, like... It's just a fucking awful match. Like, this just would never get on the card in later years. It just shows you, like, great as wrestling was in this period. Like, there was matches that just sneaked on the cards like this. And it's like, Jesus. Next up, though, um, for the tag titles, we have Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart taking on D'Lo Brown and Mark Henry. Basically, they're basically talking about... How Mark Henry's been with everyone. And then, like, the, like he said, like, China. And King's like, yeah, debatable. And then he says, like, oh, like the transgendered one. I can't remember what her name is. And he's like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> King, 
King brilliant on I mean Cole isn't bad here but it's a shame that JR was out for like late 98 and most of like the start of 99 that does suck um, but yeah that's a really solid match here for the tag title sadly obviously Owen Hart wouldn't be around much longer um, Val Phoenix then taking on Ken Shamrock for the WWF Intercontinental Championship Billy Gunn is a special guest referee basically the gist of this is no referee wanted any part of the match and therefore Kit Billy Gunn steps up and this went 16 minutes and this was a solid fucking match but basically Billy Gunn absolutely shafts Ken Shamrock here Val Phoenix wins obviously he's got Ryan Shamrock in his corner uh, Ken Shamrock's sisters like and Ken kept reminding us on comments that you don't miss with the younger sister of a brother yeah that was pretty funny next up though we've got the corporation China and Kane taking on Degeneration X break it down rock one a sipping hobby you know yeah but this is actually a really decent match here um shane mcmahon on commentary as well and he's basically pivotal in how this match uh, ends because he gets involved which basically prompts kane um to recover choke slams triple h he then grabs china and throws china over triple h and then she pins him when the ref manages to do like a pretty much slow count so yeah but now it's time guys to move into our main event matches we have mankind versus the rock last man standing match for the WWE. i mean i didn't mind the half time match because it's unique and weird but i feel like the royal rumble match is just far better than this one like mankind getting thrown off like the the balcony and crashing onto the pyro is so memorable the multiple chair shots to the head so memorable but in this one it's like it's a decent match don't get me wrong i mean it's a last man standing match but you know it's a, it's a good match but i feel like they'd already done a lot more um there was a point where mick foley was going to go for like a pile driver on the announce table the rock back body drops on oh and he, he the way he fuds down on like the timekeeping area jesus man um Rock also did, he started singing Heartbreak Hotel, but he was talking about Smackdown Hotel, which I thought was pretty, um, pretty good. But the match finally does come to an end, guys, when they both grab steel chairs. They both swing for each other's noggins and crack each other in the head, and this basically sets them both out for a 10 count. But this was done very well. It didn't look cheap. It just shows you these two have fucking, um... Like, you have to have time in here, you have to, and it was done to perfection, the way The Rock even sold it, like, he came down, you know, like, most people wouldn't have wanted to land on the chair, but the way it, it was very well done, right, for a match that wasn't particularly that great, I did like the ending, even though it wasn't really, um, you know, clear cut, but, I mean, both guys looking strong in the end, but soon, The Rock will be getting that title back for Mankind, uh, sooner rather than later, but next up, it is Stone Cold versus Mr. McMahon. I mean, it's it only goes 7 minutes and 55 seconds, but that's because the match, like, there's so much on the outside. We get so much stuff. McMahon run the way. Austin pretends to be injured to lure McMahon in. He lures him in. We get that spot where McMahon climbs the outside of the cage, but then Austin throws him through the fucking table, and McMahon is where he breaks his tailbone. The fucking bounce McMahon gets off the cage to crash through the table absolutely insane here F finkel's about to announce austin as the winner by forfeit but austin takes the mic off no he starts battering mcmahon austin goes to escape austin then sees mcmahon giving him the fingers blood pissing down mcmahon's head badass this stuff he's beating him some fucking more he hits another stunner to mcmahon he's basically bur brutalizing him here but then out of nowhere paul white well it's the big show Makes his WWF debut, guys. He cuts a hole in the ring. He climbs through it. We've got Michael Cole. King! That's Paul White! Look at the size of that man! Starts throwing um, Austin into the cage. He then checks on McMahon. McMahon tells him to throw Austin into the cage again. But then he throws him into the cage. Austin 
then smashes into the cage, but the cage wall opens, McMahon, Austin hits the deck and wins, and therefore is the new number one contender for the WF Championship at WrestleMania. And yeah, Austin always talked about this, like, he's like, you big bastard, because <laughs> like, Big Show was throwing him far too rough. But yeah, guys, a really fun pay-per-view. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's like, you're, it's, it, it's kind of like your standard, like what you would probably expect from an Attitude Era pay-per-view. You know, like matches, not none of them are particularly great. It's not really, we're not really in that era yet where like you're going to get, but the moments are brilliant. You know, I, I'd, I'd probably give it a six and a half out of ten. You know, because there's a lot of jobber stuff, but the segments, the, the build up to the main event match is all good, guys. And on that note, peace.